Hello and good morning to you from me, Gary Champion Psychic Medium. I've been hearing one thing all day, so I thought I'd do a video about it. Uh, also, I've noticed um, the video I did about forgiveness. It's got the least hits of any of any video. Why? Because you don't want to hear about it. You don't want to hear about forgiveness you've got to do. And it's it's difficult. It's hard to forgive someone who's screwed with your life. So that tells me something. Even though I've disabled comments because of the, the comments I get. Um, it, it is interesting, isn't it? The, the, you know, the hardest thing to do, it seems like, of all my videos is to forgive, and yet I did a video about it. I guess I get what I deserve. Today's video is about non-linear thinking. And I think in the world, you, you have two separate groups of people. You have people who are in the trenches, in the offices, in the drafting places, and the, they've got little tools and spanners, is an English word, and, uh, you know, they're measuring and quantifying things uh, in order to take the next leap. The first engine that was ever made that powered a car or an airplane. They were they were a mess. They had gas everywhere and they used oil and they didn't last very long. So along come these guys and they say, okay, well, if we put a ring in there of a harder material or a softer material or a particular kind of material, we won't have that oil loss. We won't have any engine failure as quickly as we do. Because you can't sell something to someone, and that was their idea, mostly motivated by money and a desire to get ahead and to feed their families and to make sure their kids had shoes. It was to design something that would sell, that would stay out there a while. Um, and as soon as they invented an engine that went in a car that didn't use much oil, that didn't blow head gaskets and whatever, they, they sold by the millions. Model T, Model A, 13 million of one, I think. I read the other day, 13 million Model Ts or Model As. I can't remember which one. That's a lot of cars to consider that there aren't very many of them still around. And if they are, they're in someone's garage covered up. But they finally hit upon an engine that you could take across this country because we didn't have roads. We had dirt, clay, paths. And if two cars met, then they had to, one of them had to pull off and let the other one go by. And then th that group of people who steadily inch out, improving the design of whatever it is until it works. And then it's not enough that it works, then it needs to hold more passengers, it needs to be larger, it needs to have bigger tires on it. So always, I thought in the 60s cars had gotten about be about as good as they could get, but these cars today, they they run a long time and very efficiently. So anyway, there's those group of people. Then there's the non-linear thinkers like me who um, will sit in a room and stare at a car and say, you know, if it had wider tires, it would stay on the road better without knowing the technical stuff it takes to make a tire. I know in the original sense of tires, they were more like uh, carriage wheels, you know, like a uh, horse and buggy carriage wheels. They were wooden with spokes and things. Then someone put some rubber on it. I guess from Burma, they invented artificial rubber. And then they were solid wheels, solid rubber tires. And then they ballooned them. They began to put air in them and blew them up. And then the ride got good. Because you can't take your date out in a car that's so hard to ride in, it hurts your back. All kinds of intentions here. So that would be me. I sit and stare at something long enough, and a solution usually comes to me. Not because of my brain, but because nonlinear thinking usually happens from the other side. It's a leap. It's a leapfrog. 
over of course no one asks us anything about anything but um, if that designer engineer is also very psychic or a medium or connected to the other side in some way he has those leaps himself many a thing in a car or a balloon or um, medicine uh, there isn't an area that art for sure music that hasn't been touched by nonlinear thinking it's not a linear thinking thing you say gee I think that would sound good let's put that in there and it does first time and then many many uh, music musicians have said they wrote a song they didn't write they, they put it down but they never it never occurred to them it just came through them many a poet writer has experienced the same sort of aha moment. And that's what it is. It's an aha moment. Thank you, guys, for giving me the right words. It's an aha moment. You're staring at a car, sitting in the garage, and maybe you're having a cup of coffee or maybe a cup of tea. And you're staring at it and you said, I bet I could get people to ride in that if it was more comfortable. Let's put some balloons in those. Let's fill those with air. That's about how they came to it. I don't know. I wasn't there for the aha moment, but it was certainly was something like that. And after that aha moment, then it's turned over to the engineers who say, we can do that. We can build that. We'll put you know, white wall tires. We'll put steel belts. We'll... That's the linear thinking people. But the creative idea to do something usually is an aha moment, or can be an aha moment, and in many cases is. So we can't take credit for it. People who are, who are creative, we tend to take credit for things that, because it's just the easiest thing to do, and we like being patted on the back, saying how great we are. The truth is the aha moment came from some spirit on the other side that said, we'll help him out a little bit which is really kind of what paranormal investigation things are about. They're, they're rattling your case to get you to ask them, to an answer questions, and they're trying to give you advice. And it's usually when a guy, it's amazing, it is a guy sitting around on a barrel and he's having a cup of coffee and he's doing nothing, but he's relaxed. He has his car there, not thinking about anything. Maybe he just came back from a ride, a tour around the city. And he's all relaxed, and they say, put some air in the tires. And he says, yeah, I bet if we put some air in those tires, that it would work. So that's the difference between linear and nonlinear thinking. Linear thinking requires steps. Incremental, slow but sure steps that will get them to that whatever they don't even know what's out there they're doing this because it's the next step to take we'll put a curve in the wing of an airplane we'll put the tail on it someplace else we'll put the pedals here we'll make it hydraulic instead of mechanical these are the things that usually if they're done right or so they begin with a an outrageous aha moment Anyway, everything is being invented right now. I thought surely that all the inventions have been done, but, but they haven't been. The guy that, or the improvement. The guy looks at a clothespin and says, I think I can make that better. So you can write on the back of somebody else's, some, whoever invented the clothespin, probably a woman, who nonlinear thinking. Then someone comes along later and says, if we put a hydraulic jack on it, it'll stay on there better. Or we make them blue, people will use them more and we can sell more. We leave them this wood color, they don't sell very well. Someone has tacked something on there. Well, that's, that's an improving an invention that already exists and they pay patents for that. So use your nonlinear thinking if you can to come to the, because it doesn't take an engineer. To, to leapfrog into, into knowing things. You had a knowing. 
Oh, let's put some air in those tires. Then I can have a date on Saturday night because she's not going to be complaining about her back hurt or her legs or, I don't know. And that's why most guys join rock and roll bands. Doesn't have to do with anything but women. No fear, no regret, no anger. Thanks for watching.